could give us an easy rack to follow. She's nothing. Wait till they see us. FDR proclaims new deal. Read all about it. Get your paper here. Read all about it. FDR proclaims new deal. Get your paper here. Hiya, Jimmy. Oh, hi, Mrs. Costello. You're a little late today. Did he leave yet? Not without you, he would. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. See you later. Get your paper here. Was you born? I was born in the hospital. <laughs> How come? Were you sick? No, I wanted to be near my mother. <laughs> you hey! Tell me something. When was you born? I was born on a Thursday. How do you know? Well, the next day we had fish. Hiya, bud. Hiya, baby. How are you? Fine. How's he doing? Hey, Awful. Hey. Tell me something. How did you get in here in the first place? Well, in the first place, here I am. And in the second place, I come in on my friend's ticket. Oh, oh. where's your friend? My friend is outside looking for his ticket. Get out of here. I tell you something. I will have the manager take you out. Well, the joke is on you. I don't go out with men. You, hey! Did you really marry that hey, little man? Tell me something. For better or for worse. Boys, handsome guy like me around and you pick him. You were taken. Congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Dutch, I hear you must have met your uncle last week. Yeah, we had to. He was dead. <laughs> Tell me, did he leave you anything? Did he leave me anything? He left me a hole of a shock a horse. Oh, I don't believe that. You want to see it? Yeah, sure. Best I can. I, you'll get it. It takes time. We've been doing this act for a year and a half already. He's right. Who asked you your opinion? It's free. What else is today? Maybe you should listen to him, Lou. Why should I listen to a guy I don't even know? Don't you read the billing? Yeah, only where I am and who's up on top. And you don't look like Gypsy Rose Lee. Can be funny. I am funny. Listen, I've got to go on in the second half. Meet me at Rubens after the show. We'll uh, have something to eat. You buying? I'm buying. I'm eating. Scotch as usual, Mr. Robert? Water on the side. And uh, we'll have our water inside. <laughs> and three Rubens. Is that all right? Yeah, I have three Rubens also. <laughs> a poor relative. Well, everybody wants to be a comedian. I think we can make it as a team. Ah, but I understand in the past year you had five different partners. Why is that? You find the right one, you dance through life together. It hasn't happened. Lose the right one, bud. There's no better comic in the business. Oh, excuse me while I check that out with Bert Lahr and uh, Eddie Cantor. Hey, them guys are good, but inside I know I'm the best. Cocky little guy, aren't you? Abbott, don't ever call me little again. You've got a handful here, Ann. <laughs> hey. Hey, guys. Aren't you two gonna get together, huh? Nothing left to do but clear up the details. 60, 40. Oh, that's another straight man doing a joke again, What's right? What's wrong with 50-50, bud? I've been in the business longer. I'm older and I'm taller. You a gambler? I've been known to wager a few. Okay. Heads, 50-50. Tails, 60-40. Right. No. 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 Hey, this has to be like a marriage. 
forever and ever. Equal partners. The lady wins. Okay, here's to Costello and Abbott. Uh, 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 uh. The straight man always gets top billing. Why? Oh, it's tradition, Lou. To Abbott and Costello. Uh, to tradition. What you trying to prove out there? Who cares? Pick a card. Hey, Bernie. Yeah? How long is she gonna stay on there? All night? She's the headliner, Lou. Yeah, she gains 10 more pounds, they'll be yelling, leave it on, leave it on. You guys better get ready. Oh, no. I told her to keep those pasties on. Drained them pretty good. So, we'll pump them back up again. Top of that, you bums. Your mother was a German shepherd. <laughs> well, Lou, here we are at Aqueduct. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Say, why don't we go down and see my horse before the race? Yeah, let's go take a look at that old nag. Wait a minute. Don't call my racehorse a nag. Do you realize that I own one of the greatest mudders in the country? What has your mother got to do with a racehorse? My mother is a horse. Your mother's a horse? I can see the resemblance. Well, what do you think? She is a human being? I wouldn't go so fast to say that. She won the fifth here yesterday. Ah, but you should be ashamed of yourself to put your mother in a horse race. She used to pull a milk wagon. You should be kinder to your mother. Well, if she doesn't feel like running, I scratch her. Ah, but you weird. Oh, will you shut up? I said I have a fine horse and he's a mother. How could a he be a mother? Well, sometimes a he makes a better mother than a she. Abbott, if you got a lady horse and she has a little baby, doesn't that make her a mother? Depends on how she runs on wet ground. Oh. Look, I can't waste time with you. I have to feed my mother his fodder. Oh, sure. She has the right to eat just... You have to what? I said I gotta feed my mother his fodder. You gotta feed your mother his fodder? And what does his fodder eat? He eats his fodder. His fodder eats his fodder? What kind of family have you got, Abbott? A bunch of cannibals? Are you calling me Hannibal? Yeah. Those are fighting words. I dare you to punch me. Hit me, Lou. No! Stick to the act. What's the matter? Are you afraid? Please, Lou. Right here. I dare you to punch me right here unless you're afraid. I'm not afraid. And anyone that says that about his mother and culture horse deserves to be hit. <laughs> okay, Robert, take it down. Come on, we're gonna have a... Huh? Come on, Abbott. I didn't mean it. I'm Abbott. Don't just stand it. Call a doctor. Abbott. Abbott, get up. Get up. Abbott. Annie, I really didn't hit him that hard. I mean, I didn't mean to hit him. Look, would you stop being so guilty? I told you it's not your fault. You know, we never even rehearsed that bit. It wasn't a piece of business. What do you mean? It wasn't meant to be in the act. I don't understand. Bud's an epileptic. An epileptic? I've known for a long time, even before I met you. Why didn't you tell me? I promised Bud I wouldn't. Well, you're the one you always said, man and wife. We never keep anything from each other. Oh, honey, he's, he's afraid. Besides, I, I promised him. And I hit him. I really hit him. Look, 99 times out of 100, it stops the seizure. And the audience, when you saw them tonight, they just, they, they think it's part of the act. 
Where are you going? Well, I got to talk to him. Please, don't tell him I told you. But you're the one said it. It's like a marriage. For, for better or for worse. Okay, come on, get up, 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 what? up. Why? Why? So I can knock you down again, that's why. Oh, wait a minute, Lou, let me explain. You see, I, I get these sudden migraine headaches. Yeah, and they use that for a reason to get sloshed, is that it? Wait a minute, Lou, if you never had a migraine, you just don't know. I don't know, there's a lot of things I don't know around here, like, for instance, why you carry unsharpened wooden pencils in your pocket all the time. The jam between my teeth so I don't swallow my tongue. Okay. Well, why couldn't you tell me about it? I mean, after all, we're partners. Do you remember before we teamed up, you wondered why I had five different partners in one year? Yeah, I wondered. For a little while. They walked out on me. One lousy seizure, and I was back doing a single. <laughs> you were doing a single? Now, that's funny. That's a real joke. I guess you want out too, huh? No, I don't want out. Why would I want out? I got the best straight man in the entire world for a partner, and I want to keep him forever. You mean that? Sure I mean it. Now let's get something to eat. But let's change first. Lou. Huh? Never change. Well, Lou, here we are in the middle of nowhere. No trains, no buses. We'll have to rent a car. Where? Uh, you drive. How can I drive when we don't have a car? I didn't say you drive. I said you drive. That's what I thought you said. Oh, never mind. I'll drive the you drive. Oh, I get it. We both drive. Oh, will you pay attention? When I say you drive, I mean I drive. I don't mean you drive. When you say you drive... You don't mean me drive. No. You mean you drive. Now you've got it. When I got it, I don't even know what I'm talking now about. Take it easy, take it easy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't finished, Abbott. Oh, don't make such a big deal about it. Well, you gotta stop cutting me off to get carried away. Every time I start rolling, you pull me back. You don't know when to get off. It's that simple. You're just jealous because I get the laugh. Why should I be jealous? That's what you're supposed to do. And you ain't supposed to stop me! The straight man keeps the rhythm, tightens the tempo. I know when it's time to get off. Whoa! Which girl? The Persian girl. But how did you know she was Persian? Because she had her Persian melons with her. <laughs> they were laughing. People laugh at their bellies, not their crotches. Lately, I can't do nothing to please you at all. Nothing. Don't worry about me. Worry about the audience. I only worry about what makes them laugh. Look, you do your job and I'll do mine. And mine is to keep the act clean. Okay, it was a little blue, but it wasn't much. It was just a little. What do you need that for? After the show. To unwind. Lately, you find more and more excuses to hit that bottle. Look, just because I tell you what to do on stage doesn't give you the right to tell me what to do off stage. Jeez, Abbott. Only a minute. For your own good is all. That's for my own good. Why? Just tell me why. You got a pretty wife. We're booked solid. We're going to be headliners soon. Our salary has doubled. I'm scared, Lou. What? I'm scared. Oh, you mean like you felt it coming on? Lou, have you ever been on a beach during an electrical storm? No. Can you imagine what it's like to have lightning explode inside your brain? I know what that's like. I live with that every day. When I was a kid at school, the other kids used to watch me fall out of my seat. Call me names. 
laugh at me. I couldn't fight back with it. Epileptic. That's why. Say when, partner. God love you, Lou. It took you so long to find me. We found each other. Well, what the hell? <laughs> oh! Smooth, huh? <laughs> Alright, here we go. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two. Now reach. Two, three, four, pop. Kick. And one, two, turn right. Albert, one, when you're not drinking turn, scotch with water on the side, two, what do you drink? Four, I drink scotch without water on the side. Play cards. Oh, wait a minute, Albert. You know, these people ask us to go out for dinner. They say, what would you like to drink before dinner? What should I order? Before dinner? Yeah. Martini. Oh, that's got no alcohol in it, has it? Well, of course it's got alcohol in it. What kind? Well, mostly gin. What? Gin. You said it, not me. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, could you tell me where I can find Abbott and Costello? There they are, right over there. Oh, thank you. I think I get 53 points. <laughs> Just deal, will you? Hold it, hold it, hold it. I'm sorry, honey. Thank you very much. Could I see you, please? All right, girls, let's take it again from the top. Now, watch very closely. I want that arm Am I interrupting? And bring it in yes. Who are you? I'm Eddie Sherman, the world's tallest midget. Eddie Sherman. Uh, the Eddie Sherman who books all those one-nighters in Siberia? Oh, 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 that's funny, funny. That's funny? Well, I'm, I'm a big fan of you guys, and anything you guys do is funny. What do you want? What do I want? I want to be six foot tall, blonde, and have shoulders out to here. I want to marry Greta Garbo. But most of all, I want to get you two guys to quit burlesque, and I want to make you big stars on Broadway, and on the radio, and in the movies, and... I know which Eddie Sherman you are. You're the Eddie Sherman that invented Christmas. Yeah, we appreciate your interest very much, Eddie, yeah, but we're doing just fine. Well, following strippers is okay, but it's not good enough for you two. Wait a minute, wait a minute. In less than two years, we've become one of the top teams in burlesque. Let him talk, Abbott. I can get you guys started in Atlantic City at the Steel Pier. All right, at the top. What's so terrible about appearing with big names like Eddie Cantor, Harry Richmond, Guy Lombardo, Tommy Dorsey? For how much? Well, I think I get you 150 a week. There goes Christmas. We're getting 500 now. Wait a minute, Abbott. So we each take 100 a week less. That's not so bad. Uh, uh, that's 150 for the team. You're asking us to give up 40 solid weeks of burlesque at 500 a week to play a minstrel show? And get you a 10-week guarantee. Oh, let's give them a standing ovation. <laughs> mm. uh, excuse me for asking, but why us? I told you, I'm a big fan of yours. Uh, your timing is superb. You guys work together like two lovers. Mm, little hearts and flowers. <laughs> like two lovers who get a laugh a minute. Yeah, and at the prices you're quoting, that comes to a little less than a nickel a laugh. Abbott, you're the best straight man in the country. And Costello, you've got pathos. What's that? Pathos. All the big ones have it. Charlie Chaplin, Jimmy Savile, Red Skelton. Abbott, let's take it. This is something I really want. I really want to do it. You really want it, huh? Yeah. Willing to sacrifice all the work we put in, huh? Yeah. You want it? Okay. Then I'll tell you how we're going to split up the 150. 90 for me and 60 for you. Ah, uh, but you don't want to do that to me. No. What I do want to do, Lou, is to teach you a lesson you'll never forget. I won't forget. It's a deal? Yeah, it's a deal. But we're making a big mistake. Jimmy Savo, Red Skelt, Charlie Chaplin. And watch that word? Pathos. You got 90. I got pathos. Deal. Mm, we really bombed. Finish out the week. I'll see if I can get you out of the contract. Better get us out of the country. <laughs> Too bad. Not as long as I still have my violin. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go back to burlesque. I don't want to do that, Abbott. Read the papers lately? We can't afford them. Mm. Mayor LaGuardia is closing the burlesque houses. Say, yeah, uh, we got out just in time. Mm -hmm. Time to start. Mm -hmm. Eddie, really? 
What are they going to do? I'm going to see someone about getting them into radio. Radio? Mm-hmm. One of our best bits is when I look scared. Well, if you can look scared, you can sound scared. Go ahead, sound scared. Show me how you sound scared. Yeah. Hey! 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I'm going to take you to see Ted Collins so you can get on the Kate Smith show. He owes me one. Let's get something to eat. Come Kate on. Smith show. Let's walk slow. We're lucky we'll get hit by a car. Routines won't work on radio, Eddie. They're big stars in burlesque. Just give them a shot. It's not the same, Eddie. They're too visual. Fifty million people will be going to the icebox. Ted, the audience will love them. Besides, nobody ever went broke underestimating the American public. I can't do it, Eddie. You owe me one, Ted. Eddie, you're asking me to jeopardize Kate Smith's reputation for a couple of burlesque comics. I'm sorry, Eddie. I can't do it. Look, if you've got anybody else, I'll use them. They're going to make you famous, Ted. Famous as the man who turned down Abbott and Costello. <laughs> Come went up to the pet wolf that I've got out of set to the wolf. <laughs> He says to the wolf, you go to the front door and I'll go around the back and chase them out. He said, he said... See, now, Ed Wynn is a visual comic and he's on the radio. You're funnier than the Wynn, too. Mm-hmm. And Jack Benny? Funnier than Jack Benny. And Eddie Cantor. You're funnier than Eddie Cantor. Charlie Chaplin? I said Charlie Chaplin. So you're not as funny as Chaplin. Well, nobody's funny as Chaplin. And he's not on the radio. Those big shots. I'm gonna fix them someday. I'll make them sweat. Hello. Yes, this is the Costello residence. <laughs> it's for you. Who is it? He says it's the world's smallest giant. Oh. Hello? Eddie? Are you kidding? Sure. Eddie, that's wonderful. Thanks a lot, Ed. No, no, I want to tell Abbott. Yeah, thanks. Hey, what happened? Well, Red Skelton has to go to Hollywood to make a picture, and they need someone to fill in his spot on the Kate Smith show, <gasps> and they're going to use us. <laughs> teams in burlesque who are the jealousest guys in the world because we're going on the radio on the case smith and he just called hey abbott uh, i have to call you back something very important just happened in here <laughs> oh honey one minute please i don't think that Ted Collins likes us at all. We're on the show, aren't we? Did you read this stuff? I've seen funnier stuff than this on tombstones. Hmm. Maybe Collins is trying to prove to Eddie that he was right about us. That's what I think. You got any ideas? Same as you. Welcome back to the Case Smith Hour. And now our guests. For the first time on our show, that hilarious comedy team, Abbott and Costello. Yeah. 
You know, strange as it may seem, uh, they give ball players rather uh, peculiar names nowadays. Uh, the Cooperstown team, for instance. They have who's on first, what's on second, I don't know's on third. Why don't you tell me the names of some of the guys on the team? But I'm telling you, who's on first, what's on second, I don't know's on third. Do you know the fellas' names? Yes. Who's on first base? Yes. What's his name? No, no, no. What is on second? Who is on first? I don't know. Oh, no, he's on third. Let's start over. Yeah. Who's playing first? Yes. I mean the fellow's name on first base. Who? What are you asking me for? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Who is on first? Well, go ahead. Tell me. Who? The guy on first base. Who? Has your team got a first baseman? Well, certainly. Well, I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? No, no, no. What is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, don't change the players around. I'm not changing anybody. Well, now, take it easy. Just take it easy, Costello. Now, what's the guy's name on first base? Now, what's the guy's name on second base? I don't know! He's on third. We're not talking about him. How could I get on third base? Who well, you mentioned his name. I mentioned the third baseman's name. Who did I say is playing third base? No, oh, who is playing first? Stay <laughs> off of first base, will you? Please, please, please. What is it you want to know? What is the fella's name on third base? What is the fella's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, third base! base. <laughs> <laughs> you got an outfield. Well, sir. Cooperstown got a good outfield. Oh, absolutely. The left fielder's name. Why? I don't know. I just thought I'd ask. Well, I just thought I'd tell you. Tell me who's playing left. Feel. Who's playing first? Stay out of the infield! <laughs> <laughs> Don't mention those names out there. I want to know what's the fella's name in left field. What's the fella's name on second base? I'm not asking who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third base! <laughs> you got a picture on your team? Well, what kind of team would this be without a picture? I don't know. Tell me the pitcher's name. Tomorrow? Why don't you want to tell me today? I'm telling you, man. Then go ahead. Tomorrow. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me the name of the pitcher? Now listen, who is not pitching? Who you is... You break your arm, you say who's on first. <laughs> <laughs> then why come up here and ask? I want to know what's the pitcher's name. What's on second? I don't know. Third base. <laughs> You got a catcher? Well, of course. The catcher's name? Today. Today? Mm hmm And the pitcher's tomorrow? Now you've got it. I got it. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's all Cooper Town's got is a couple of days on that team. That's all. Well, I can't help that. What do you want me to do? You got a catcher? Yes. I'm a good catcher, too, you oh, know. Oh, yes, I know that. Oh, I would like to play for Cooperstown. Well, I might arrange that. I would like to catch now tomorrow is pitching on the team and I'm catching. Yes? Tomorrow throws the ball and the batter gets up and he bunts the ball. Yes? So when he bunts the ball, me being a good catcher, I want to throw out the guy at first base. Yes? So I pick up the ball and I throw the ball to who? Now that's the first thing you said right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, that's all you have to do. I throw it to first best. Yes. Now who's got it? Naturally. Who, who has it? Naturally. 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 I throw the ball to naturally. No, you throw it to who? Naturally. Naturally. Well, say it that way. That's what I'm saying. Don't get excited. Take it easy. Don't get excited. I throw the ball to first base. Yeah. Then who gets it? He better get it. Now, this is all right. Now, will you take it easy now, Lou? Just take it easy. I that's... throw the ball to first base. Whoever it is, they grab the ball, but the guy runs to second. Uh -huh. Who picks up the ball? He throws the ball to what? What throws it to? I don't know. I don't know. Throws it back to tomorrow. <laughs> a triple play. Yeah, could be. Another guy gets up. He hits a long fly ball to center. Why? I don't know. And I don't care. What was that? I said I don't care. Oh, that's our shortstop. <laughs> 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 I'm 
a bad boy. The audience loved it. Yeah, the audience there. But what about the audience across the country? I'm telling you, Abbott, we did the right thing. Should we let him in? You think Collins sent a lynching party? It's me, Eddie. Hey, come on in. <clears throat> Sorry we let you down, Eddie. Let me down. The switchboard lit up like it was Times Square. Kate Smith loves you. We got a contract to do her show every week. You serious? <laughs> this is just the beginning, fellas. Just the beginning! <laughs> <laughs> Good-looking enough. You're gonna hatch from yourself to death someday. Jealousy from my own partner? Shame on you. Looks like you're getting ready to meet the Queen of Sheba. Actually, I'm getting ready to meet 20 million Americans, and I want to look my best. They're sitting home in their house there with just their undershirts. Yeah, only your half. Mine are wearing suits. It's open. Oh. Lou. Hello, Eddie. That tie with that suit, I'm not too sure. You really think it's wrong? Well, it doesn't make any difference, bud. You'll be buying a whole new wardrobe anyhow. More suits? Yeah, out in California, they wear those lightweights. Did you say California? That's right. We got a firm offer from Universal Pictures. We're going to be in the movies. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are they offering? 35000 for an eight-week deal. We'll take it. Wait a minute, wait. Lou, we'd get more than that in clubs. So what? I don't care. Don't you understand? We're giving up more than we're getting. Look, you boys have been asking for a picture deal for a long time. Not me. I'm a straight man, not an actor. You call Universal. Nail down that deal. Will you think about it at least, Lou? He doesn't have to give him a... That's all I ever think about. What's so damn special about being in pictures? It's special to me. All right, all right. Take it easy. You got a show to do. We can discuss it later. Hey, Eddie. Will they take Costello without Abbott? Lou. Don't Lou me, Eddie. You serious? Abbott, I'm very serious. He's nuts. Okay, tell Universal they got a deal. Clark Gable, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> But I wanted to be a movie star. Did I ever tell you that, Ann? Yes, Lou. You know, I was out here years ago. I nearly killed myself for a buck a day as a stuntman. Did I ever tell you that, Ann? Yes, Lou. Oh, they didn't treat me very good then. But this time, they're sure going to know who Louis Cristino is from Patterson, New Jersey. I'll tell you that, Ann. As young as I used to be. Let's sit down for a minute. Your attention, please. Now, okay. You don't look so good. Honey. Yeah. 
I want you to go see a doctor. Why? 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 Because I love you. Why? Well, I had a physical in New York from the movie company doctor before he came out. You did? Well, why don't you tell me? What did he say? Uh, well, I'm making a picture, ain't I? Lou, remember, a marriage for better or worse. I got a little heart murmur, and it keeps talking to me. It says, Lou, you're going to be a star. You're going to be a star. When I was a kid, I had rheumatic fever. It's a residual thing. It's nothing. I'm, I'm fine. How bad is it? I got to cut out a few things. Cigars, alcohol. I'm not allowed to push any battleship when they're moored. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? Just keep loving me. I'm fine. So you said it's all right, huh? Can you do this picture? Can I be a star? Come on, Mrs. C, let me show you my town. Uh, 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 uh. Get a porter. Randall? Yes. Abbott and Costello are here to see you. Send him in. Gentlemen, come in, come in. How do you do? <laughs> I'm Alan Randall. I'm going to be producing your next film. Meet Lester Markell. He's going to be directing. Nice to meet you. Hello. Come, sit down, sit down. Well. How's California agreeing with you? Oh, great. Very nice. Yes. Well, there's quite a selection of golf courses. You play golf? No. Well, you have to learn. I think that the uh, universal executives are certainly sufficiently impressed with your talents to star you in a feature. I've been selected to produce uh, but privates. I think so that we understand each other. You ought to know that uh, there are 11 other producers who have turned down this golden opportunity. Oh, wait a minute. May I ask something? Yes? Who the hell do you think you are? Oh, cut it out. Wait a minute, I know who we are. We are... A couple of stupid, uneducated burlesque comics who never got past the seventh grade, and we don't play golf. But what we learned, we learn in front of an audience. Now, just so that we don't stay stupid, why don't you tell us who you are? Yes, I can do that, Mr. Costello. Lester here is a highly schooled actor and director. It's a fine list of credits. I am a graduate of the University of Michigan. Michigan? M.A. I have written some successful screenplays, and I have produced some successful films. That answer your question? Yeah. Good. Because now that I've established our credentials, maybe we can get down to discussing the plot. Buck Privates. Yes. Charlie. They're here now. No, they can share one of the smaller dressing rooms. Fine. I'll get them over to wardrobe in the morning. <laughs> Someday I'm gonna rub his nose in it. Take it easy. I promise you that. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Jimmy Fiddler reporting to you from the glamour capital of the world, Hollywood, USA. 
And now it's your reporter's turn to eat crow. When Bud Abbott and Lucas Costello arrived in Tinseltown, I blasted Universal for signing them to a long-term contract. Well, please pass the Blackbird, waiter, because I am going to eat my words. Buck Privates has outgrossed such pictures as Sergeant York and How Green Was My Valley. The boys may not win any Academy Awards, but they most certainly will turn the whole valley green, especially that part that is called Universal. Hey, this is no time to play on the deck. I'm a bad boy. All right, cut, cut, cut. What's the matter? We had a camera problem, Lou. We'll have to do it again. Well, you're going to print that one, because I'm not going to do it again. We had a camera problem, Lou. Then fire the cameraman. He's no genius. I'll calm him down. We'll play some gin. Alan, what do I have to do to get off this picture? Hmm? The guy resents everything I say and do. Lester, he's crude. I'll talk to him. All right, everybody, take five. This is Jimmy Fiddler from Hollywood, USA. Hollywood is working on all fronts to do its part in these trying times. And it is this reporter's suggestion that when the going gets rough, take your wife or your girl and go see Abbott and Costello in Keep Em Flying. <laughs> You're a beautiful hostess. Uh, also a very pregnant hostess, I might add. Yeah, but never lovelier. Hope you have a boy. I think Lou wants that more than anything. I'll give it my best try. <laughs> A uh, scotch with water on the side and a milk with a scotch on the side. <laughs> four o'clock. The invitation's at four o'clock, right? It's after six o'clock. Yeah, but sometimes the mail... The mail! Get... You got yours! He got his! I can't stand half the people you invited anyway, so who cares? I care! Where's that Randall? He should be here! His maid called, honey, and, uh, well, he had a previous engagement in Malibu. Malibu? I hope he drowns there in Malibu. Where's that other bum guy says he's a director? He's always looking for free handout. Where's he at? In Palm Springs. Palm Springs, huh? Well, I'm going to call him over there. I'm going to call him and tell him where he's supposed to be. Here, right here. I don't know why he gets so upset. He's been working too hard. He's a bundle of nerves. When we finish this picture, you two ought to take a vacation. Who are you conning, Eddie? I know he hasn't won any popularity contests at the studio. Why should I call him? Why? Yeah, who needs him? All right, start the music. Start pouring the booze. That's my department. Okay, I'll tell them to start serving. I'm sorry, Lou. Eddie, don't be sorry for me. Be sorry for them, Eddie. Every one of them. How many you want? Two. Mm -hmm. I'll take none. You're bluffing. I'm bluffing? Then I got a thousand dollars to back mm -hmm. that up. Yeah, you're a thousand. <coughs> Another five hundred. Did you say come in? No. Me neither. You're holding up the picture. Um, I'd like to ask you to sit down, but you see, we don't have any room in here. We've got a production schedule to meet. Look, I don't think you made that full house and I got a foot. Hey, Abbott, did you ever see the size of Diana Durbin's trailer? Take it easy, Lou. That's no answer. Take it easy. It's as big as a boxcar. They got plenty of room to sit down in there. Got a living room. Got a kitchen. Got a bed with a shower and a bar. Uh, me and Abbott would each like one of those trailers. You can't get two of those trailers on a soundstage and have any room to shoot because they're too big. Well, I want a trailer that's big enough to have a party in in case the guests show up. Wait a minute. Deanna Durbin has that trailer because she earned it. She's the biggest box office attraction this studio has ever had. 
I am so surprised that they didn't teach you how to read in that college you went to. Here's the variety. It's marked out in red. Abbott and Costello are now the third biggest box office draw in this entire town. And that's ahead of Miss Durbin. All right. Let's see what I can do. Uh, uh, Abbott, is there anything else that we would like? Leave me out of this. You want to be out of this? Uh, you're, you want to be out? Yeah. Okay, you're out of it. I want mine by 5 o'clock. I'll be reasonable. I'm going to be reasonable. I'm going to be so reasonable, you're not going to believe it. Because I am going to put on my costume, and I am going to go out on that stage, and I am going to do everything that that nephew, excuse me, that the director tells me to do. Fine. I just don't know how funny I'm going to be. You'll have your trailer. And by 5 o'clock. That's a bad name, Lou. You don't fight fair. I fight the only way I know how. I fight the way I learned to fight when I was a kid on the street in Patterson, New Jersey. Yeah, you're not in Patterson anymore. The whole world is Patterson. If I don't fight, they're gonna eat me alive. Take it easy. I'm, I'm in your corner. My corner? It's not my corner. Ah, but don't you understand? It's our corner. It's, it's our corner. And if you ever take somebody else's side again, we're going to be through. You did it, honey. You did it. I saw the baby. They, they wouldn't let me hold him, but I saw him. Yeah, I saw him, too. I have the most... Beautiful wife in the whole world, and now I have the most beautiful son in the world. You got everything now, haven't you, honey? Yeah, but mostly I have a son. I'm the happiest man in the whole world, and it's all account of you. Hmm. You helped. I forgot to ask. Are you feeling all right? I am now. Doctor said you had kind of a hard time. I'm awful sorry. Good things never come easy, Lou. Well, as long as you're all right and the baby's all right, then uh, everything's all right. <laughs> Are you tired? Mm, yeah, a little. Well, because, you know, I have to go back on the set. Oh, I see. Yeah. And, and I'll see you. And, I, and I'll see you later. And because I, when I finish, I'll come back because the visiting is whenever. <laughs> Lou! What? I love you. Yeah, I love you, too. I love everybody. It's a very nice day. Comrade in arms. They need a few moments away from the hell of war. And Hollywood is providing it. Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen, in the person of such stars as Abbott and Costello, who play army camps, make films, go on bun drives, do radio shows, go wherever they're needed to make people laugh. That, ladies and gentlemen, is also what this war is about. So why did you hang out with this very fat lady? Because she ate my dog and I wanted to be near him. Now cut that. Out. I'm a bad boy. 
You guys are gonna have to stop accepting dates without checking with me. The Secretary of the Treasury called us personally. That's all well and good. I want you to explain to me how you expect to get from Seattle at 10 it. o'clock to New Orleans at 11 o'clock. If I o'clock. get over here and you stand over there, we'll have it surrounded. Maybe uh, we can get uh, a shot out of a cannon. Whoa! Are you all right? Oh, a little indigestion. I gotta stop eating so many hot dogs. When's the last time you had a physical checkup? For what? Indigestion? Oh, yeah? Well, I'm canceling everything from now on because you are gonna have a physical checkup in the hospital right now. What for? Belly ache, it's gone already. Listen to him, Lou. Since when are you my mother? Since you don't want to take care of yourself. You're supposed to say my father. This is not funny, Lou. Look, if I was really sick, wouldn't I tell you? No. But that's the last time I'm... I'm ever gonna ask you to tell the truth. Abbott. Yeah. Abbott, you better get me to the hospital. No, 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 no. Get an ambulance. Ooh. Wrestler. Yes, he's getting heavier every day, huh? You have your appetites as big as your daddy's, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Thank you, Daddy. Bye, Butchie. Oh, the sweetheart. <laughs> How is Lou Ann? He has his good days and his bad. It's been three months. What does the doctor say? He's a sick man. Sicker than he knows. Bud? The doctor says he'll be an invalid for many years. Will he be able to work again? Probably not. Oh, he's a fighter, Ann. He'll make it. Yeah. <laughs> he'll make it, because of Butch. That's what he calls him, you know, Butch. Well, oh, I swear, he, he just lives for that kid. Sure it's going to be all right if I... Go see him? Yeah. You make him laugh. I bet you five dollars a point and everything under 150. I'm not allowed to bet on your blood pressure, Mr. Costello. Well, let me get over there and you get in the bed and I'll bet you on yours. Come on! Oh, unhand me, you sex maniac! As you can see, Mr. Abbott, there's no change in the patient. <laughs> To me, that's a good sign. Now remember, no excitement. Yes, ma'am. That's why any hired on, nothing exciting. <laughs> How you doing? I'm all right. Did you see my kid? Oh, yeah, as soon as I got here. Yeah. Beautiful. Can I get you something, uh, some books or something? Racing form. No, oh, no gambling, Lou. Annie laid down the law. It's like a prison here. Of course, I'm in love with the warden. Eddie was here. Eddie says you got a new caddy convertible that's longer than your swimming pool. It's got everything on it, including a portable bar. Portable bar, wow. I'd like to come down there and take a look at it. But he... Tell you what, I'll make you a deal. What kind of a deal, Abbott? I'll give you eight months. No, 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 no. Make that six months. You give me six months for what? Get on your feet. The car is yours. Are you kidding? Yeah. You got a bet, buddy. You're gonna make it, pal. I gotta make it, Abbott. My kid needs his father. Not to mention his mother. Who's on first? I don't know. Take me! and back to work, huh? Here. Enjoy your new car. Hey, I win another bet, huh? Yeah, but this one I'm glad to lose. Thanks, Abbott. Hey, look at this, will you? Look how strong he's gonna be. You know he's gonna be a year old the day after tomorrow? Lou, he's beautiful, but we're late. We better get going right now. Give Daddy a kiss, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Let him stay up and listen to the show, huh? I want to know if he recognizes my voice on the radio. Okay, but if he falls asleep, don't take it personally. No. Love you. How is he really, Eddie? As good as new. You sure? Alan, stop worrying. Where's Bud? He's in his dressing room. Booth. You, Mr. Sherman. Sherman here. What? Oh, good Lord. Yeah, yeah, right away. I've got to get Lou home. What is it? There's been an accident. The baby. I'm serious. I'll let you know as soon as I get there. Back there, Lou. Well, want to see him? Lou, please listen to me. No, Lou. Where's Annie? Where's my wife? She's in the house. I've given her a sedative. Get him in the house, Mr. Sherman. Baby climbed out of the playpen. I can't believe the baby climbed out of the playpen. We'll be all right. I'll take care of you. I can't believe the baby climbed out of the playpen. We'll be all right. Okay. Stay up late and listen for my voice. Do they know out there? No, nobody. We'll have to do the show, Lou. Skelton's waiting in the dressing room. It's all right. I can do it. Are you sure? Now, this whale was in the ocean, and he was very hungry. And Captain Jonah, he didn't want the whale to capsize the boat. What? 
to capsize the boat. Capsize? Because, yeah, he didn't... Yeah, but what does that mean? What does what mean? A capsize. Capsize? Yes. Mm, that That's a big word. Yeah, well, what does it mean? It's a very nice word. What does capsize mean? Capsize? Capsize. That's like a six and seven, eight, seven and a quarter. <laughs> Go on with the story. So Captain Jonah, he didn't want the whale to six and seven eighths the boat because he would lose the passengers, so he figured the only thing he could do was throw over a barrel of apples. Anything else? Yeah, there's something else. He also threw over a three-legged stool, but the whale was still hungry, so Captain Jonah did a swan dive right into the whale's mouth, and the whale swam away. I don't think that's very funny. I didn't come to the funny part yet. Well, the folks are waiting to laugh. Well, I'm coming to it now. Three years later, they caught the very same whale. Oh, you wouldn't. I wouldn't what? You wouldn't try to pass off a tired old joke like that on these nice folks. What tired old joke? The one about where they cut open the whale and they find Jonah sitting on the stool selling apples three for a nickel? Of course not. I'm, I'm going to tell them how, how, I'm going to tell them how they found Jonah selling the, 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 uh, the uh, You wouldn't uh, uh, tell uh, uh, that old wheeze, would you? No, Abbott. He wasn't selling apples at three for a nickel. Good. He was selling them three for a dime. <laughs> Let me, Ken. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if I may step out of character for a moment. Uh, late this afternoon, Louis Costello, Jr., not quite one year old, died. Uh, there is no greater tragedy in this world than a man or a woman losing their child. My partner, my friend, performed here tonight, not only because he didn't want to disappoint his millions of fans, but because this was a tribute to his son. I'm sorry.
okay? Tell me, tell me about what happened in New York. Oh, it was was it Chicago? Does it make a difference? No, I guess not. This house is a mess. We'll tell the housekeeper. It's your job, you're in charge. <laughs> I'm in charge. <laughs> Well, that's very funny, but then that's your job, isn't it, to make people laugh? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, Lou. <laughs> that stuff's gonna kill you. You need that? Yes, I do. You shouldn't have left them alone by the pool. We have it. Yes, yes. Here we are. Well, now, Lou, um, tell me, is this gonna be forever, huh? Do I have to keep paying? What am I supposed to do? What? You tell me, what am I supposed to say? I'm sorry. I wonder where the hell Randall is. He said he'd be here. So he's... Yeah, well, I want him here now. You finally got here. What'd you come through, Pasadena? A conference. The writers are still in my office. Oh, well, sit down. Take a hand. Did you call me here just to play cards? Yeah, sit down and take a hand, otherwise you're fired. I said sit down or you're fired. Well, then you're fired. You hear me? Randall, you're fired! Stop that. Are you nuts or something? Now you're really out of line. Abbott, don't do that to me. Nobody's doing it to you. I'm not doing it to you. That man is not doing it to you. You're the only one who does it to you. The play cards. Abbott. Abbott, from now on, I'll work with you. I might even play cards with you. But I will never, ever talk to you again. You want what? You heard me. It's a joke. I know it's a joke, but I don't get it. Abbott will get it. 60-40. Lou! Remember the first time you booked us in Atlantic City? Of course, that's the first time we worked together. Got $150 for the team? He took 60%. I'd forgotten that. I don't forget nothing. Lou, but if you do that, you'll ruin the act. The audience will know it. They feel it. Look, I don't care how many times Bud has hit you or how dumb you felt. They, they, they knew you loved each other. Once that goes, the act goes. Right. 60-40. And I want an answer tonight. You sure you won't change your mind? He once said he's gonna teach me a lesson. Now I'm teaching him a lesson. This uh, this came to the office for you. What is it? It's from the Bureau of Internal Revenue. I'm not gonna do any benefits for them guys. Yeah, well, they're auditing you and Bud. They're asking questions about some of your deductions. Uncle Sam didn't ask any questions when we went out and sold all those bonds for him. Now they're asking questions. You're making a lot of money. They want to know how you're spending it. Yeah, well, okay, you take care of it. I don't want to be bothered with that Lou, joke. I am not your business manager. Okay, Eddie, I'll take care of it. Eddie? Yeah? Don't forget. I want an answer from Abbott tonight. What can I do, Eddie? It's either that or the act goes. I'd forgotten. Oh, oh. he doesn't forget anything. Okay, tell him 60-40. Next thing you know, it's going to be the billing. 
Oh, he's tried that too. That's a difference. Abbott and Costello, Costello and Abbott. Our pictures are dying anyway. The tax people are on our backs. What can you do? You know, bud, it's like he's a different person. He is, since the baby died. Every dime they earned is declared. There is no charge of fraud, Mr. Sherman, but the deductions are questionable. For instance, you each took a deduction of $150,000 for a foundation. That was for a school for underprivileged kids. It merely says foundation. There is no name. The building isn't finished. That's a legal deduction. I was merely referring to the fact that the department needs all the information in order to complete its audit. We're not holding anything back. How much do you pay for your suits, Mr. Abbott? My suits? 250 300 isn't that quite a bit to pay for a suit? I don't know, is it? I pay only $65 for mine. Nobody's gonna fight you on that. Look, you're not starring in the movies. I've got to have an image, I gotta be well dressed. Are you starring in a movie now? No, we're, we're between pictures. But you are wearing the suit now. Well, I don't like to sit around my house naked. I'm sorry, Mr. Abbott, but only those times when you're wearing the suit in a film is it deductible. Um, I would consider 25% uh, more than fair. Your accountants, Mr. Costello, seem to have overlooked some of your income. Like what? A uh, $200,000 advance from a casino in Las Vegas. I lost that money in that casino. Uh, Mr. Benjamin Siegel claims that as a deduction on his taxes, therefore we have to list it as income. Mr. Benjamin Bugsy Siegel owns that casino away. Give me the 200000 I lost it in that casino. Gambling debts, Mr. Costello, are non-deductible. I'm... I'm a little confused. <laughs> uh, could I ask you a question? No, Ann. Don't help. Don't... Excuse me. Are you gentlemen aware how long it's been since either of you have paid the income tax? Who keeps track? We do, Mr. Abbott. All right, let's stop shadow boxing. How much do they owe? $650,000 each. Each? Wait a minute, I don't think he's finished. With penalties and interest, $1,700,000. $1,700,000. I don't believe it. Well, how, how long do they have to pay it off? Well, my figures are based on immediate payment. Naturally, the unpaid balance would carry an interest surcharge of 6% per month. Nobody living has that kind of dough. That's not fair. The IRS, Mr. Abbott, works on one principle. You make a lot, you pay a lot. Well, I haven't got it. If you want to get it, you're going to have to sue me. Oh, we will, Mr. Costello. Well, you will. He's going to sue me. Good day, gentlemen. The United States government is going to sue me. So much apiece, Sam. Buyer, take the pair. How much apiece for it, ladies and gentlemen? What's your bidding pleasure on it? How much, please? Who's got $500 apiece? $200. Two, two and a half, $300 bid. A bid, $300. $300. Somebody you all through. All done. Any fans over $300, that it is. Sold at $300. Next slide, please. All right, Fill fellas, we'll answer any questions you have. Please. Who's first? Uh, how much have you and Mr. Abbott earned in the past few years? My clients earned approximately a million and three quarters last year. How much do you owe? A million seven hundred thousand plus penalties and interest charges. What has your total income been for the past ten years? Not enough. 
And you're claiming that you're broke, right? I gotta pay out when I take in. I can't afford to not work. I can't even afford to die. Mr. Sherman, we understand Mr. Abbott also sold his estate. How much did he realize? Not enough to pay his taxes. Are you and Bud going to be working together again? We hear you aren't even speaking. They're opening in Las Vegas in about a week. I'm sorry, I guess you didn't understand my question. It was, are you and Bud speaking? Look, I talk to anybody. Are you upset about all this, Lou? Oh, come on, fellas. This has been a rough day. Are you bitter? Come on now. Eddie, the man asked a question. Let me answer. You know, when the war broke out, I tried to enlist. I got a rheumatic heart. Now, Abbott was too old. So we did shows. Buck the show. No tax write-off, no deductions, which I'm learning about now. We worked our butts off, and we made millions. Millions. We didn't get a dime. We played things. Why, we played army camps you never even heard of to the White House. And do you know how they thanked us? Thank you very much. Took my house, my furniture, my cars. They took my clothes. What are they going to do with my clothes? My clothes. <laughs> they took gifts. I gave them to my wife. Anniversary birthday. You give you give things this ring. My father gave me this ring. He got it from his father. See? Now I gotta turn this in. I Eddie, what are they doing to me? Oh my god, Eddie, what do they want from me? That's enough. That's enough. Look, come on. Eddie, the boys themselves have called it a marriage. All right, they have to know when it's over. But even when a marriage dissolves, there's a responsibility. When I first brought those two guys to you, you were practically in receivership. Now your studio is solvent. I think you have a responsibility to them. Yes, we have a responsibility to the stockholders of this company. Each of the last four Abbott and Costello pictures has lost money. And I'll tell you why. Because you assigned second-rate publicists to us, you gave us bad scripts, yes. and you gave us directors who didn't understand what the boys did. I think they deserve a shot. Have they given us their best shot? Yes. You think the audience doesn't recognize the antagonism between the two of them? Oh, come on. That's been reconciled. There, there's no problem between the two of them. Eddie, they have made 28 pictures. They have made money. The studio has made money. You have made money. We are not renewing their contract. And that's it. When you're enjoying your home in Malibu and the one in Beverly Hills, think of them because they bought those houses for you. Thank you. You know, for somebody who was so anxious to have lunch, you didn't eat very much. Who eats lunch? You want to talk about it? About why I don't eat lunch? Mm, no, why you called me in the first place? Because I miss you. You never come around anymore. It's not easy for me, Ann. <laughs> it's not easy for you. It's been rough, huh? <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do it anymore. You know, I just... I don't... I don't know what I'm going to do. Come on. It can't be that bad. You've seen the way we are. It's just being emotional. He struck out. It could have been any of us. He's punishing us. Like we were children. Come on, Ed. We, you, you, Bud. I mean, even your relationship is 60-40. So it was a little slap on the cheek from a long Don't time. Don't defend him. Everybody defends him. And I won't have it anymore. I'm sorry. I wish it were as easy as flipping a coin. Remember? You know, and sometimes one of the toughest things in the world for people to accept is change. Things change. People change. 
doesn't mean that love still isn't there. I'm alone, bud. Oh, yeah. You're not alone, Ann. Are you Mr. Abbott? Oh, yes. Could we have your autograph, please? Sure. Not in the suite, and he's not in the casino. Eddie, you think he had a seizure? He's lying somewhere in an elevator or in a hallway or something. No, 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 no. Lou, you go on. I'll find him. Don't Eddie, worry. Eddie, don't worry. No, go, just go on. Go on. I'll find him. And now let's have a warm Las Vegas welcome for Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My friend Abbott is supposed to be here. He must be late. He must have stopped off to look at the pictures in the lobby. Sometimes he looks to see that he's still in the picture, wouldn't he? Because somebody keeps cutting his head out of the picture. I don't even know why I do that. Uh, me and Abbott, we work in a lot of different places. One time, me and Abbott was in an institution, because people in an institution, they need to have some entertainment, too. And we were over by the gate, and a man went by with a load of fertilizer. And I said, hey, hey here where I you am, going with that da, load of fertilizer? Hey, nice he see. said, oh, I'm going to take it and put it on the strawberries. I said, you ought to be in here. We put cream and sugar on the strawberry. <laughs> That's the biggest Hey, <laughs> Abbott, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Abbott, did you see this morning's paper? Why? What was in it? My lunch. Oh, that's a hot one? No, it was just a plain sandwich. Oh, hey. Oh, was a hey, slip Abbott, are, are you all right? You, you feel okay? I feel great. Abbott, you drunk? No, oh, is that too? <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, well, Albert, I guess uh, we better change our clothes to do the crazy house sketch. Well, we got the right clothes. No, huh? no, we're going to do that. Oh, Wait a minute. But you dressed up I'm like a nurse. Out there. And I'm like that. that. We'd be right back, folks. Isn't we that just the biggest ass you ever saw? <laughs> <laughs> drunk! Lousy drunk! Oh, there's no problem, neighbor. That's it. That's it, Eddie. I'm through. I never again in the rest of my life will work with Bud Abbott. What about the show? The show. The show. Tomorrow night on, I'll do a single. Tonight, let him make some kind of an announcement. Oh, you got magic fingers, Sam. And I ache all over. Well, maybe you're not as young as you used to be, Lou. Eddie. Yeah. I thought you was in New York. No, they canceled the meeting. How's Ann? I tell you the truth, Eddie, I don't talk that much anymore. I read your reviews. <laughs> Those creeps, they say I'm dogging it. Yeah, well, that's, that's what they say. Lou, what's really happening? I'm not feeling so hot, Eddie. Your heart? Yeah, I got some pains. Well, why don't you take it easy? Well, I, I get a rub, I get some sleep, I'll be okay. Lou, why don't you get Bud back into the act? That way you don't have to carry the whole thing on your shoulders. I heard he's still drunk. Well, you heard wrong. He's on the wagon, he's all right. Now, how about it, Lou? It'd be like the old days. Okay, Eddie. I'll give him 500 a week. Oh, I can't do that, Lou. I couldn't do that to Bud. I didn't think you could, Eddie. So I'm still gonna do a single. <sighs> okay. I'll see you later. Take it easy. Are you all right? Oh, fine, fine. Maybe 
maybe you shouldn't do the show tonight. Are there people out there? Yeah. Are they breathing? They're breathing. Well, then I'm gonna kill them. <laughs> I'm going to make it after all. I never doubted it. I went to bet heavy on it. Hey, Eddie. Yeah? You know what I would like? What? Ice cream. What? Ice cream. Well, you think the doctor would let you have it? Oh, yeah, he said anything. I could have anything. How long have I known you? Uh, I was keeping score a long time. Do I know you like ice cream? What kind of ice cream do you like? Strawberry ice cream! <laughs> Ta da! What you got there? I had a strawberry. Oh, malted. what is that? A soda? No, it's a malted. Oh, a malted, a strawberry malt. Sure, they can't put soda because it'll go bush, 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 bush. That's because you're a good boy. Mm. Mm, I'm a good boy, all right. Eddie, you know what? You're gonna have to start to line up a lot of work for me. Oh, now, wait a while. The doctor hasn't given us OK yet. Eddie, I got a lot of good years left. In fact, I saved the best for the last. You were always the best. We was the best. I was part of a team. Me and Abbott. Yeah, we was the best. Does Abbott know that I'm in here? You asked me not to tell anybody. Nobody, Lou. How is Abbott? He's fine. Eddie, I heard he went on 6 o'clock news and that he asked everybody to put in 50 cents a piece to help pay for... Don't, Lou. Now, Eddie, that's not right. A man should be able to have some dignity left. A man shouldn't have to do that, Eddie. I mean, that's not right, and we're gonna get him for that, Eddie. We're really gonna get him. Now, we're gonna get him. Lou! Forget about getting anyone. Just get better. It's not important anymore. Yes, you're right, Eddie. Yeah, you're right. It's just, it's not important anymore. Hey, Eddie. I had a lot of strawberry malteds in my life. You know that? But I've all of them I ever had. Boy, Eddie, this one's the best. so late. It's okay. It's good to see you. Come on in. It's, uh, it's Lou. He had another attack. Lou's a fighter. He'll make it. Not this time. Oh, <laughs> 
few laughs. More than anyone, I, I could make them laugh. Who gets it?